By understanding Maine's geologic history, um, we can therefore understand not only the large-scale structure of things like the Appalachians, which, one day, uh, which a long time ago used to be even higher than the Himalayas, but we can also understand what the rocks look like in our backyard and why they are the way that they are. So the history is largely dependent on the formation of Pangaea and the breaking apart of it to our modern-day uh, continental uh, configuration that we've got. If you look, this is a bedrock geologic map of Maine. So what it does is this map uh, was made by geologists going out into the field um, with nothing more than a shovel and a compass and figuring out what all the different rock types were throughout our state. And you can see over here it tells you little descriptions of what each of those are. But in general, our entire state has gone through some sort of metamorphism, which means it's all been subject to heat and pressure. There's very few places that are unmetamorphosed. If you look at this little blue spot here, you don't really see it here on this map. Everything has been at least weakly metamorphosed because when the collision of the continents happened and Pangaea was uh, coming together, this was a lot of stress. So when that happened, uh, the stress manifested itself in a couple of different ways. One, when the crust thickened, what happened is, is that the lithosphere was pushed down into the asthenosphere, heated, and we created melt. So as soon as you melt rock and it refreezes, that becomes what are called igneous rocks. If they're intrusive igneous rocks, these are ones that froze in place inside the crust after they forced their way upward. Okay, and then if you have extrusive igneous rocks, these are ones that came out through volcanic action. So when you look at the coastline of Maine, and thank you, George O's photography and Joe Braun photography, um, you can see a lot of places where this large granite exists because these were literally blobs of molten magma that then froze in place. And over time, the rocks above them got eroded away, and then we've exposed these rocks here. And you can also see these giant boulders that they make uh, on the coastline as well. The other types of rocks are metamorphic rocks. And in metamorphism, what happens is, is that the rocks that were already there, okay, I should say the sediments, are uh, the sedimentary rocks, these become this heated with tons of heat and pressure. So the further down you go here in the earth, the higher the temperature and the higher the pressure in the lithosphere as well. So all of these rocks get baked. So when they get baked, they get altered because their minerals and elements can move around. Um, and if you look here, you can even almost get to the point of melting. And everything uh, that gets heated and changed um, without pure melting, that's considered metamorphic before it becomes a melt. And as soon as it becomes a melt, it becomes igneous. If you look here, you can see these are all the layers in the rock that were kind of like the layers in a cake that just gets put in the oven for way, way too long and now have solidified. You see these same layers right here. So going back to the bedrock geologic map of Maine, if you look at these places that are intrusive igneous rocks, these like purplish colors, you'll see that these are like blobs because they're literally spots where magma came up through the crust and then froze. So they're not long and stringy. Instead, they are these features that are often... Oh, spherical, but imagine that they've been eroded away from the top. In fact, our deepest lake in Maine, Sebago Lake, sits in the uh, in this giant granite pluton here um, called the Sebago Granite. And we're part of what is called the Coastal Maine Magmatic Province. Now, this coastline was close to the collision of the two continents when the continents came together. So us going this way and the other one going this way. So you get most of the igneous activity happening here where that crust thickened and you had the magma intruding up into it. But when you look up here, there's not nearly quite as much because it was further away from that collision, further away from that heat and pressure. So this is just a look, uh, I'd say more of a textbook look at the geologic history of Maine's bedrock. And now I think we're going to go out into the field. Hello, physical science students. Today, I'm going to teach you how to rob a train. So, all right, no, actually, sorry. I'm going to tell you about rocks. So for today's lesson, we are out here on the Eastern Trail in Scarborough, and the tide is rising rapidly, but this was the time I had to do it. Um, people have also thought it's kind of weird, and I'm out here setting up a classroom, but I uh, put up this sign just in case so that nobody gets too weirded out by me, just kind of putting signs on rocks. But today we're going to talk about the three different types of rocks. Igneous, metamorphic, and sedimentary. And I think it's important that you know um, a little bit 
about the rocks that happen in your backyard. So of course, I'm gonna start off with the ones that don't really happen in our backyard too much. And those are sedimentary rocks. So sedimentary rocks, these are formed basically when sediments just kind of pile up. They've got lots of layering to them and they're rarely found in Maine because our rocks have been through a lot. Our rocks are old um, and they form when the sediments become lithified. That means that they get compacted under heat and pressure and they then form rocks instead of just loose sediments like this here. So if you look, this is an example of a figure that talks about sediments coming into some kind of a water supply or something like that, where they then pile up over time and eventually get compacted um, in the geologic record. More specifically though, here in Maine, we have got rocks that are primarily those which were once sedimentary and then baked under intense heat and pressure and altered to become what are called metamorphic. So we're gonna see if we can go over here and do this without falling in the drink. Okay, so what metamorphic rocks are, is that these are sedimentary rocks that are altered by heat and pressure. Usually sedimentary here in Maine, even though you can actually bake uh, igneous rocks as well. So we see lots and lots of layers. So if you look at this rock here, you can see the old layers that were formed when this, uh, this rock, the rock sediments were laid down. Um, this is an old ocean rock, and these are old ocean muds that made these really, really nice fine layers. Often, they'll have layers of quartz veins in them that were deposited from hydrothermal alteration. So if you look, you can see this is a little vein of quartz that uh, hydrothermal, um, so basically water that had dissolved quartz in it, moved through this rock and eventually deposited these little layers here of quartz, kind of like, I hate to say it, cholesterol in an artery. And you can even see a bend in it right here where after this rock was formed and it was still kind of ductile, it got heat and pressure on it and stress that then folded this rock by being pushed inward like this. And you see that when you form cobbles or boulders, these are usually platy or cylindrical when you form them from metamorphic rocks. So like this is a typical little pebble that came from um, a metamorphic rock and it breaks off according to these layers. Furthermore, we talk about the map of Maine. If you look at these islands in here, all of these islands have an orientation that is long and skinny here in Casco Bay because they mimic the original layering that was in those metamorphic rocks. Okay, one more to go. If we go over here and we start looking at igneous rocks. This is a great example of an igneous rock. And igneous rocks can be intrusive or extrusive. If an igneous rock is extrusive, it means that it formed when the molten uh, magma came out and became lava somehow outside the ground. Versus if it's intrusive, that means that it was magma that went up into the crust and then solidified there to form these things called like plutons or laccoliths, sills, etc. So we don't typically see layering in these. If you take a 300 level geology course in college, you may be able to talk a little bit about layering, but in general, there's no layering to this. It is all just kind of uniform throughout. You can see crystals if it formed inside the earth because this rock had a chance to cool slowly over time and the minerals and the elements to migrate to form these uh, minerals that you can see in actual crystal form. So like feldspars, quartz, etc. This one's really shiny because you get all kinds of micas in there too. And you'll also see that these form cobbles to boulders that are blocky or near spherical. So when you look at one of these rocks when it's broken down, it breaks down into these like spherical blocky shapes because there is no internal fabric. There's no fabric like this metamorphic rock right here that's gonna give you those platy layers. Instead, you're gonna get really blocky forms. So that's why when you look at a rock that's this big made out of granite, which is an intrusive igneous rock, it's a giant block. It doesn't really have much orientation to it one way or another. Versus if you look at this one here, it's one giant plate. So these are the three types of, of rocks, sedimentary, metamorphic, and igneous. And in Maine, you're typically gonna run into rocks that are usually igneous, look something like this, very uniform, or metamorphic, typically from sedimentary rocks that show quite a bit of layering. Take care, good to see everybody, and hope all is well.